everyone. Thank you for coming today. Uh, my name is Kenny Chisholm, and I am the Sustainability Coordinator for Dining Services over in the Dining Commons. Um, and I am happy to present our speaker today, Hilary Allen. She is the Recycling Coordinator for the City of Santa Barbara. Um, I've heard her share a, a bit about um, what trash and recycling looks like in Santa Barbara already, and she's phenomenal, can answer so many questions. Um, so please be thinking critically as you're going through the presentation, and um, yeah, feel free to engage uh, during the presentation as well. Yes, please. Thank you. Thank you, Kenny. Thanks, guys. I'm so glad to be here. I'm very honored, and I'm so glad that you guys are here and that this team is assembled. This is really a neat thing. So I'm here to talk about trash. Um, trash is kind of a difficult subject because it's just like the least sexy of all of the, you know, environmental things, like saving water and all these things. But like, it's just, it's, it's really hard to get people to talk about trash. And it's really not that fun to talk about trash. It's just, it's not. So my, my big, yay. All right. And I want you guys to ask questions as um, I, I like this presentation a lot more when the questions come as I'm, as I'm going, because I can kind of tailor it towards, you know, your questions. So please jump in and ask me anything. Um, so this presentation is going to basically be about waste reduction and separation. And the reason why I talk about those things is I feel like with trash, people are so confused. They're so overwhelmed. What they generally do is they just do the wrong thing because it's just they throw it in the wrong container or they don't think about it. It's done. And so I want to give some sort of simple tips on how you as a person, you as a student, you as a teacher, you as an employer, employee, any role you have in your life, you can do better by just doing some of these simple things. And then also it's not so daunting, it's not so hard. And then, you know, we can pass these on to, you know, other friends and we can, um, we can educate the people we know as well. So first thing I'm going to do a little bit is I'm going to talk about who we are because it's kind of confusing. So I'm with the city. So who we are is we are a, a division at the city. We're nine people. We're called City Trash and Recycling. Um, we are not Marburg. We don't pick up your trash. So we manage uh, the contract with Marburg. It's actually the largest contract in the city. Um, and we, our deal with them is they pick up the trash. We kind of do everything else. So we do education. Um, we do cleanup events. We do outreach. We work with a lot of businesses. Uh, we do some code enforcement and some things like that. So. We're a pretty tight little team. We like saving the world. Um, and who is Marburg? Marburg is a private company. They haul trash. They own a fleet of trucks. They're the ones who come out to your house and they pick up the waste. Um, I have to say we're very lucky in Santa Barbara because most people have just some hauler, some national hauler from Tennessee, waste management or something. But Marburg is local, so you know, they're kids go to school with your kids and they live in the same neighborhoods as you do and they genuinely do care about this community and they have been a pleasure to work with as the city so we work very closely together and have a partnership so that is how we pick up the trash in this town marburg picks it up but we work very closely with them to make sure that they do a good job and are doing the right thing so the big thing i want to talk about is waste reduction because i like to say it's the new recycling I say that because the old days was sort of recycling. You put your can in the recycling can and, and that was it. You, you've done so much good. You've done all the good that can be done. That can's gonna be made into a new can and you've done your due diligence. Um, I'm gonna get to recycling later, but recycling isn't the, the savior that it used to be. Um, really the thing we need to be doing now is we need to be reducing, reducing, reducing. Everywhere, with everything you do, you should be thinking about how to not use it. So one of the things I do is I have this little game. I play with kids and we have all these things that, where does it go in the trash? Does it go in the recycling? Where does it go? Afterwards, we'll go through the trash pile and it's like, how do you not make these? You know, juice pouches, don't buy them. You know, it's, it's not just, does this go in the trash? It's that, how do you now not make this trash? How, you know, you buy in bulk, you, you, you know, whatever you can do, it, it's kind of hard, so. Going reusable, that's a really big one. Think about all the things you use every day. I'm a mom, so let me tell you, it's taken me a few years to get all the Ziploc bags and straws and single, you know, serving items out of my life. But you can do it. You can do it. I am like fully on Tupperware now. I do not buy any single serving things for my kids. And I've noticed the amount of trash I use just with that is huge. It's huge, the amount of cups I use, and lids, and straws, and Ziplocs, and saran wrap. Just focusing on that stuff 
has reduced the amount of waste I make as a person significantly. So again, you just have to kind of challenge yourself. You know, do you drink a lot of coffee? Then get a reusable, start with just the coffee mug. Get a reusable coffee mug, get two. Then, you know, try and take them as much as you can. It's not gonna be perfect. It's okay, give yourself a break. You drink a lot of water, sodas, get a reusable um, drink cup. How about this? You don't even have to buy Tupperware. You already get it with things that you buy every day. Wash it out, reuse it. There, you're not only you're reusing it, but then you're not using a Ziploc bag the next time. There are so many ways you can reduce. If you're at, like I was just at a restaurant today, I got a burrito, they wanted to put it in a bag. I, I didn't take the bag, I just took the, it was wrapped in foil. I just took the burrito. Um, they always want to give you silverware. If you don't need it, don't take it. So just everywhere you go, think of anything that you can just not take. And that will, just, that will just reduce the waste. Anything that we might throw away, we need to not be throwing it away. So here's some things you can do. Carry a reusable container. Pack your lunch in reusable containers. This one's my favorite one. Challenge vendors. What I mean by that is if there's somewhere that you go frequently, so maybe you have kind of a good rapport with them, you can maybe challenge them. So we had a bagel shop near our office. And we started going in with a plate from the office and saying, can you just put our order on the plate? And they were really cute. They loved the idea. And they were very supportive of it. And that's kind of hard to do just off the cuff. That's what I'm saying. If you have somewhere you go, you have a rapport with that vendor, maybe see what you can do about, you know, if you get a to-go meal, like, can you get out of there without getting any plastic and stuff, you know, it's just challenge your vendors, challenge yourself. Or if you have a job or you're ordering stuff, can you challenge your vendors to send it in less packaging? You know, think about all the packaging and all the things that you throw away in your work and your job and think about if there's a way to just simply get rid of that thing that you're throwing away. So sometimes it's hard, sometimes it's hard to do. So where does our trash go? So there's a rumor in Santa Barbara that the trash is sorted, which it's a terrible rumor because the trash is not sorted. So if you put your trash in a trash can, it's going to go straight to the landfill, which is, oh, isn't it a nice place for landfill on the Gaviota Coast? But this is where our landfill is. Now, it, as you can see, it's a beautiful, it's very well-managed landfill. We call it our little our Cadillac landfill. But if you, anything you throw away, it's going to go in the trash can. It's going to go in a trash truck. The trash truck then transfers the waste into a big truck like that. And then they see this over here, this pile. That's the daily trash. They pour the trash in that hole and then cover it with dirt. That's where your trash goes. If there's any recyclables in there, any food, they're not sorting it. It's going to get buried with everything else. So a couple things. This landfill looks great and everything, but it's going to have to be closed in about nine years because it will be full. So if we continue to send the volume of trash to the landfill like we do, it will be closed in nine years. Another good reason to reduce waste. So if we can extend the life of this landfill, that would be great because when it's closed, we're going to have to start trucking our trash further away. So trucking it further away is not great for the environment. Trucking it further away is not great for your pocketbook. Trash is going to become more expensive when we have to start shipping it to Simi Valley or Santa Maria because we've filled up our own landfill so fast and kind of unnecessarily. So anything you throw away is going to be put straight in the landfill, not getting sorted, not getting pulled out. So sorry, this graphic's kind of funky. What we're finding, we've done some waste studies in Santa Barbara that in a, a normal trash can in the city, about 70% of it is not trash. Mm -hmm. So that means that 70% of the waste we're throwing away is filling up the landfill faster and are also our commodities. They're things that we shouldn't be throwing away. They're things that have value. So we're just throwing away these things that have value. So 70% of the trash is either recyclable or compostable. The other problem with throwing away food and organics is that we've discovered that organics in a landfill environment create a lot of methane gas. And it's because landfills are, they're sealed because they don't want there to get any contamination in the water. So landfills are sealed with plastic, you know, they're underneath all this, it's just sealed with plastic everywhere. So any, any trash or organics in there, it's like it's entombed in there. So any food is going to create methane gas. So not only is putting food in the landfill filling it up faster, but organics create methane in the landfill. So in the state of California, they actually want us to start pulling that food out of the trash. Um, so 
we're going to go into the recycling a little bit. Um, I'm sure you guys have heard about the China, the green sword, yes, about how they won't accept our recyclables anymore. So this is true. Uh, I'm not going to get too much into the markets because the markets are very complicated. And honestly, I don't understand them all myself. Um, but the bottom line is, is that for a very long time, we've been sending material to China. And we've been calling it recycling. But it's been really poor quality. In fact, I mean, we basically have been sending to other countries stuff that we do not consider good enough quality to recycle here. So we say we're sending our recyclables to China, but really we're sending them our poor quality junk. And China really had every right to say they won't take it anymore because it wasn't, like I said, it wasn't fine, high quality recyclables that we were sending to China. It was just really, really low quality material that almost didn't even have any recycling value. So my point with that is the markets are shaky and the markets are also starting to collapse from us saying that a piece of sticky saran wrap is a recyclable material. We need to understand that just because we put sticky saran wrap in the recycling doesn't make it recyclable and it doesn't make it get recycled. So you can hope and wish and dream that these things are recyclable, but the bottom line is there's a lot of materials that you recycle that are not recyclable and they're not going to get recycled. And in fact, we were sending all that stuff to China and now they won't take it anymore. So what we need to do is we need to stop recycling things like sticky saran wrap and we need to start putting them in the, tr in the trash or stop using it altogether. So that's the answer to that. So I'm going to go in a little bit. I guess there are any questions. Um, I'm going to go into the recycling. And that's only because people don't understand recycling as well as they think they do. You guys probably understand it better than anyone else on this campus. So recycling is when materials are sorted and broken down, melted down, and made into new products. So there's a lot of misunderstanding about what recycling is. You know, a lot of people want to throw paper towels in the recycling. There isn't any way to take a paper towel and make a new paper towel out of it, really. So you can't actually recycle a paper towel because the paper towel fiber is too pulverized to make into a new one. But people don't know that. So recycling is full of paper towels. What we need to be putting in the recycling is items of real value. So I would say going forward, and I'm going to say this <coughs> absolutely, um, it should be larger than a water bottle, like the small water bottle. If it's an item that's smaller than this, you should throw it away now. Um, if it's soft plastic in the city of Santa Barbara or the county, you should throw it away. So anything that's filmy, saran wrap, bags, any filmy plastics. Um, we have kind of a little guideline, it's the thunk test, so hit the plastic on the side of the table, like if it thunks, it dunks, it's kind of dumb. but. Um, where the, the thing is, if you're doing recycling correctly, you shouldn't need a bag for your recycling container. Everything should be clean and dry, and everything should be large, I mean, large-ish. So you shouldn't have tiny bits of paper, you shouldn't have tea bag wrappers and Kleenex and all this stuff. The, that's part of the problem, I'm gonna skip forward here a little bit, which is, this is how most recycling is sorted. On a line with a human being who goes and picks it out, do you see anything of value on that line? It's all trash. It's bags and just trash, right? What if that line was all water bottles and can tin cans and glass, like spaghetti sauce bottles? You know, then that person could just be picking out all sorts of things of value. But the problem is, this is all trash. This is all stuff that some people have thought, that's recycling. But it's not recycling. It's just trash. So. Not only is that stuff not going to get recycled, but if there's a good bottle in there, they might not get it. So by putting the wrong things in the recycling, you're actually lessening the chance that the good stuff is going to get picked. So we're at the point with the recycling market where it's actually better to fill your recycling with large, dry items of good value and get everything else in the trash. What you're basically doing is you're the first line of sorting think people assume that the sorting is going to be done by the trash professionals. We can't afford to, to hire a person to sort through every single pound of your trash. We can't. You have to do it. So you have to sort properly so that the waste professionals can do a better job recycling, can do a better job keeping our landfill, you know, empty 
or you know as empty as they can you know but if everything's sorted incorrectly you know sometimes they have to take all of this recycling and then they just send it to the landfill because it's so contaminated um, so the thing about recycling is is that it does matter where you put something it does matter that it's in the right place and there's this term that we've been starting to throw around wish cycling I mean I do it my colleagues do it everybody does it so wish cycling is going Oh, this is recyclable. It, like, let's say this was just a piece of, you know, again, this is sticky ceramic. It's recyclable. So it's like, you know, you felt good because you recycled it. But that actually not only did no good, it actually hurt the process because now that's going to, going to cover up maybe something else that's recyclable. Um, another thing you can do is, is that if you put something in there that's dirty or sticky, you could potentially actually ruin something in the recycling that's recyclable. Clean paper is the thing that really gets ruined. So here's a good example. So you have a smoothie cup. I won't mention any names. You have a smoothie cup, has a lid and a straw, but it's a recyclable cup, right? Has the lid and the straw in it. It's recyclable. Throw it in the recycling. Everything in that recycling can is now non-recyclable because it's covered with smoothie. So not only did that wish recycler throw something in there that's not recyclable, but they have also potentially ruined other things in there that are recyclable. So the better thing to do would have been to throw that item in the trash. Do you see what I'm saying? Like, mm -hmm. Actually throwing things in the trash now can sometimes be the better choice. If that's where it's supposed to go, the best situation in that case be cleaning the cup out and then putting it in the trash? Yes. So, the way to do recycling correct is you want things to be clean and dry, clean and dry, clean and dry, clean and dry. My recycling bin at home is, I brought it in the other day actually, like it is this clean and I'm not kidding. There should be no drips, nothing, because everything you put in here, you should have rinsed and you should shake out. Clean and dry and it should be, you know, spaghetti sauce bottles and, you know, plastic clamshells and water bottles and soda cans but not a bunch of little, thin, filmy, tiny things because that actually doesn't help. And that stuff actually right now is not getting recycled. So think of it as commodities. Is it a commodity? Does it have good value? So metal, we're just going to go really quick. Metal, anything made of metal. No question with metal. If it's made of metal, put it in. Metal is a really easy thing to recycle and it doesn't get um, contaminated like paper or plastic would. So there's no question, if it's made of metal, recycle it. If it's an empty paint can, you can recycle it. If it's an empty aerosol can, you can recycle it. If you have any questions, go on our website. Very comprehensive, what yes. What about foil? You can, re yes, you can recycle foil. If it's terribly dirty, no, but even if it has a little food, you can That's recycle right. foil, yes. You said paint cans. Mm -hmm. How do we effectively clean paint cans? If the paint is just dry on the inside, it can be recycled. Don't have to remove the paint. Um, if the paint is wet, it has to be handled as hazardous waste. Um, we do have a drop-off point, a couple drop-off points in town for paint. Um, and then again, that's I actually do have some pamphlets, but there's a whole other thing I'm not going to get into that we call our landfill ban items. Um, paint, electronics, motor oil, things like that um, need to be handled separately. Anybody who puts those things in the trash, you know, it's potential to affect, again, the water, in the landfill. We don't want to put any hazardous waste in the landfill. Um, I, again, I have some pamphlets if you guys are curious about um, where those locations are. Um, so, um, recycling. So, metal, anything metal. Glass, again, very easily, easy to recycle. Um, it also doesn't get contaminated. Um, you need to, you're going to need to wash it out. Um, people will say to me, but we're in a drought. We just had a meeting with the water department. They support us saying you should wash out your recyclables. Um, you have no idea how much water it takes to make these items and how much water it takes to recycle the items. Also, how much it takes to drive the, I mean, anything you recycle is also gonna be driven all over the place. And then there's a huge processing. So recycling is great, but reducing is better. Broken yes. glass? Broken glass is fine. Um, it's really more about the safety of the drivers. So you can put broken glass in your container. If it's large. If it's large, and I mean, if it's just so it's not sticking out or anything like that. Um, and then the only other thing is drinking glasses and window glass. I know we're kind of splitting hairs here. They're not recyclable just because those um, two kinds of glass are treated for heat. So um, I believe they put silicone in them, but it, they, it renders them not recyclable. But any other glass, um, 
jars or anything like that are all recyclable. Give them a quick rinse. Uh, paper, right now we're not, we're just looking for the clean paper, no mixed materials, so nothing with the little window on it. I, I tear the window out. Um, like Kleenex box, you gotta get that plastic like thing off the Kleenex box, but if you do, you're, it's gonna make it more likely to be recycled. Um, paper has a lot of value. The problem with paper is that it's very easy to ruin it in the recycling. So we definitely wanna recycle all paper, especially office paper. We obviously should be going electronic, but I mean, any office paper you do make, um, you can recycle it, but then like I said, you wanna be careful because you wanna keep your recyclables clean and dry because the first thing you're gonna ruin is that paper. Um, plastic's the hard one. Um, don't look at the numbers. Um, yes? What about, paper? Um, what about shredded paper? Should you just have a container for shredded paper that you put in your recycle? Yeah, I mean, I think probably the best thing to do with shredded paper is put it in a paper bag. Here's the problem with shredded paper. When they recycle things, it's about volume. They have to capture, you know, like a truckload of paper. So when you put shredded paper in the recycling, it goes everywhere. It's very difficult to recycle shredded paper because it's just difficult to capture shredded paper. So the best chance you're going to have at recycling your shredded paper is either putting it in a paper bag or using a shredding service, which costs money, but that's going to be more eco because they're for sure going to have the volume of shredded paper to be able to recycle it. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. So you, you can see how it's much easier to recycle a truckload of clean paper than it is to recycle clean paper in this much in the volume of all the other recycling. Um, so sometimes using a service is actually a very eco way to make sure something does get recycled because they have the volume to be able to do it. Um, so I'm gonna do plastic really quick. So plastic, only hard plastic. Don't look at the numbers. Uh, the numbers are misleading. Here's one reason why. Uh, styrofoam says it's recyclable right on, on the packaging. Um, styrofoam is one of those conundrums. It is technically recyclable. It's a recyclable product. If you have a facility nearby, if you, I mean, and also it's very expensive to recycle, and not only that, you're gonna have to truck it to that facility. So it's, here in the city of Santa Barbara, it's not cost effective because we don't have any facilities nearby. Trucking all of that styrofoam to a facility is not anything we can afford to do. And then can you see how weird this is? Like, how is recycling really the answer if like, first you have to rinse it, then you have to drive it to a transfer station, then they put it on a truck and drive it to a recycling facility where then, you know, they pour a bunch of resources in it to recycle it. So I think we've sort of given ourselves a lot of credit for recycling being the answer, but I think it's more complicated than we like to give it credit for. So don't think of recycling as being the answer. Think of it as being a sort of a second resort after you've tried to reduce the item. So. What about covers, T tin can covers, I mean co jar covers and plastic bottle covers? <sighs> it's funny because also the other thing is we all disagree. Um, <laughs> My colleague says to Lee, I say, I say, rinse the item, leave the caps off. Throw the caps away. Um, oh, throw the caps away. Here's why. If you put it in the recycling, it's just one of those small things that's not going to get recycled. The problem with the caps is actually, um, my understanding is that the seabirds eat them. Oh. But I, I feel like that's pretty unlikely that your cap is going to, the seabird is going to eat it. The other problem is if you leave your cap on the bottle, the bottle and the cap are often two different kinds of plastic. Mm -hmm. So then they, somebody has to remove the cap in order to recycle the bottle. So then you're lessening the chance that your bottle is gonna get recycled by adding that step in. Also by leaving it uncapped, it's gonna dry out more inside. So I, my opinion, and I think it's just an opinion thing, I say leave the caps off, throw the caps away. Some people say leave the caps on because seabirds eat the caps. Um, if you're doing either one of those and you have a clean, dry container, you're doing a great job. So either way is fine, is acceptable right Jar now. caps? Jar caps, if they're those big metal ones, if you rinse it, you could put it in the recycling. Um, make sure it's rinsed, but again, it's kind of small. I would say if it's a bigger one, put, you can put it in, and if it's clean. One of the things you have to think is, is the item you're putting in, it, first of all, is it gonna get recycled? But second of all, is it going to contaminate anything? So putting in a clean jar that's totally clean that you're not sure if it's recyclable, 
that's at least okay because you know nothing's going to get ruined because of your jar. But definitely don't throw in like a spaghetti sauce jar that's all covered with spaghetti sauce. Um, one of the reasons why, so what they do is they, you have a spaghetti sauce jar, it's full of spaghetti sauce. You put it in the recycling. The glass is fine generally, but stuff like the plastic, if it gets all covered with spaghetti sauce or like a to-go container, that's a good one. A to-go container, not rinsed. It's full of food, right? You put it in the recycling, it's recyclable. So it's full of food. They put it in the recycling and then they take all this plastic and they put it in a bale. It's like a hay bale. That's how they sell it on the market is in this bale. And if you have a part of the bale that's full of food, that food starts to rot. And if you have plastic, the plastic can start to deteriorate if it's in like this big pile of like if there's this rotting part of the bale, it can kind of expand and start rotting out like a part of the bale. And then sometimes they'll toss the whole bale. So that, that's kind of a reason why it's a little bit like you just, if you have a to-go container full of food and you're not rinsing it, then you throw it away. Putting it in the recycling does nobody any good at all. And people just don't know that. And it's not anybody's fault, but that's what people are doing every single day. So again, human sorting, machine sorting, two different ways we do recycling. Most facilities are handled with human sorting. Um, we're trying to get to more facilities with machine sorting, but you know, these, these machines are millions of dollars each. You know, most facilities can't afford to buy them. Um, so here's the stuff, here's our problems in the recycling. So, wrappers, 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 always with the wrappers in the recycling, no wrappers. Um, one of the things to tell um, is if it's multiple materials, that's just a no-no. So a wrapper is plastic and metal. You know, it's got that foil on the inside. Um, I mean, just think about what kind of machinery or process, like what's it going to take to separate that thin plastic from that thin foil? And once you've done it, do those things have any value? Not really. So chip bags, wrappers, film plastic, all not recyclable, not recyclable. This stuff needs to go in the trash. But that's also the stuff that's easy to reduce. That's the stuff that's easy to buy a big bag of chips and then, then use your Tupperware, you know? Or, you know, film plastic. I've really gotten away with using no saran wrap. Like you can really, if you have enough Tupperwares in your house, you don't really need this stuff. So it shouldn't be recycled and then, then maybe you shouldn't use it. So try to find ways to not use it. Wet stuff. Again, I think we've, I've made it pretty clear why the recycling needs to be dry. Recycling needs to be dry. I'm just gonna keep saying that. If it's wet, it's gross, you're not rinsing it, throw it away. Just don't feel bad, throw it away. Styrofoam, styrofoam is not recyclable. Even if it says it's recyclable, it's not recyclable, we're banning it anyway. So, we won't have to see it. And then the last one is organics. So green waste and food are the other two things that should not go in the recycling. They should go in the trash. And I'm gonna talk a little bit about food, and it's kind of sticky because you guys are actually in the county, so you are not eligible at this time to be a part of the city's food program because it's only offered to folks within the city limits. But I am gonna talk about it because there's a lot of legislation coming down from the state, and I have to imagine within the next 12 to 24 months, this program will be available in the county because it's gonna have to be. Um, and here's why. So the state of California has actually put out legislation saying organics have to come out of the trash, period. Right now there is legislation saying that if you don't divert your organics, you know, you're, you're going against this legislation, but it has no teeth in it at all. It has no enforcement, it has nothing. It's just, it's like a, it's kind of like throwaway legislation. It's like finger wagging legislation, you know. You better get your organics out or, or you'll be in trouble, you know. But we did get information from the state that they're starting to build um, those penalties in to the legislation now. So this is what the legislation says. The state of California has determined that those organics in the landfill and organics are, it's food, it's green waste, it's also paper. I didn't know this. Paper makes a huge amount of methane in the landfill, but we can compost it, so that's great. Um, so the state wants larger producers to start diverting, the word is divert, and that means taking it out of the landfill and putting it into a different path. They want us diverting the food out of the landfill. Um, honestly, you guys are subject to this legislation now, the campuses, as a large producer, 
But the thing is, is that your jurisdiction is the county of Santa Barbara and they don't have a program. And so right now they're on the hook. But just know that like this legislation does apply to the campus. You are supposed to be diverting your organics per this state legislation. Unfortunately, you're in a jurisdiction that does not have a robust organics program, but that doesn't mean you guys can't maybe start getting ready for that because it will be coming because the county is on the hook as much as you are to make sure that these organics are being diverted and they're gonna need to offer that program to you. So like I said, I'm gonna explain it a little bit and why it's so important. Um, the program in Santa Barbara was launched in 2009. We have over, we have about 230 businesses on of all kinds, um, restaurants, offices, schools, uh, cottage hospital is on. And really the program is just, um, what we call these are streams. So usually you would have two streams, trash and recycling in your life. And now these people have three streams, trash, recycling and food. And all they do is they put their food and soiled paper in the food can. It gets picked up like any of the other waste and gets sent out to Camarillo to be made into compost. By doing that, it makes it so that the, that food does not create that bad methane gas, excuse me. So here's what that outdoor composting looks like. Um, when you manage organics in this manner, rather than entombing it in like a plastic container, when you give it a lot of air and water and microorganisms and things, that food will break down. It makes this really nice uh, nutrient soil amendment. And then the thing that's really cool is that this facility in Camarillo, he sells a lot of his product to uh, the farmers in the area. So probably, like if you shop at farmer's market or buy any local produce, like it's probably been grown in our city of Santa Barbara compost. So it is really like, you know, you scraped it and then it got made into new food. It's, it's actually really cool. So you mentioned um, that there's paper that you put this food in? It just, you can put paper in it. So, it, so our uh, yellow bin program accepts, you can put both food and paper in it. So paper towels. Um, so a lot of like uh, City College, not that we're comparing. City College just started a pilot program just a pilot, so it's only four bathrooms in like their um, student center, um, just capturing bathroom paper towels. Um, we found out, we did a, a waste characterization at City College, paper towels counted for 18% of their trash by weight. Mm -hmm. That's a lot of their waste. So them diverting, eight, if, uh, if their, their goal is to eventually divert it all, 18% by weight of their waste being pulled out of that landfill environment where it's making the methane, just the paper towels. We're not even talking about the food. We're not even talking about any other paper, just bathroom paper towels. So I guess my point is, is that I know this is big. I know it's a lot of information. I know it's too much in a lot of ways, but you know, maybe you can just pick the one little thing that interests you or that it's exciting to you and just work on that one little thing. You know, if you really are excited about the yellow bin, like maybe we help you set up a program um, gathering just paper towels. Oh, um, again, right now the problem is is that you guys are in the county. Well, maybe at the yeah. City. In the city. Oh, in the city? Yeah. Yeah. You, um, it's only available for businesses right now. It's not available only residential. For yes. Oh. Two reasons. Well, the main reason for that is just politics, which is trash is very political, and all of our volume of trash basically is contracted out somewhere. Every single pound of it, and a residential food scraps program would shake up all those volumes. Like all of a sudden, if this one volume of trash went to this facility and went to, you know, all of a sudden different volumes are gonna go to different facilities. So every single one of those contracts has to be now renegotiated. So we've been trying to do the residential food scraps, but it's just been taking us a while. So believe me, we want to have it there. It's just been, the political machine has been sort of keeping us back. But we're, we're trying to do things like, um, we're thinking about taking some food scraps dumpsters out to the farmer's markets so that people want to bring them there or maybe having somewhere so people um, want to go and take them. Um, the other thing I recommend is, um, and I know you guys all work here, but like at our office, we have the program and we bring it in from home. <laughs> we, we use and abuse it, just however you can divert those food scraps. Well, are, we, are we allowed to personally compost stuff? I mean yeah, I, absolutely, absolutely. So there's a couple ways you can do it. That I don't know if you know, the county offers something called an earth machine. Um, it's it's a bigger, it's about like this, where you can do home composting in it, and it's enclosed. Um, they sell them at cost. I believe they're about forty five dollars. I think they're ninety or a hundred full price, but it's a way for you to do home composting. 
Um, again, if you do have, um, if you are able to work with a local city business, you might be able to um, divert some of your food scraps by taking them to that business. Um, and then, like I said, just know that we're, we're trying to be, we're trying to put this program in place and hopefully the residential food scraps will be available within the next 12 months or so. Um, we really, really, really want to have it. So for the, the things that are not compostable, mm -hmm. you know, meat and food. Meat goes in our program. So our program is, and, the, and then that's another thing, which is any community you live in, and if you do move, I would urge you, like, you need to go on the city's website or on the waste website. Like, every city is going to have different things that are recyclable, depending on what facilities are nearby. Our compost uh, facility is able to take meat, bones, shellfish, shells, anything, basically wood. If it grew on the earth, he can take it at his facility. And should we bring that directly to the facility as individuals? Or? That would, no, not right now. Like I said, we're working, well, we're working on trying to get a drop off point. So maybe within, like I said, have my card, maybe within the next couple months. Because we know people are really interested and, you know. You know, we want we want that if people are interested enough to drive it, we want we want to have that available. So, I have one more question. yeah, keep coming. <laughs> food scraps that you can't compost. Mm -hmm. What's the best solution? Should you just put them in the trash, or put them down the sink, or? Um, what like I said, once our program gets going, we can take anything. Sure. But like for example, if you do worms, you ever done worm bin? Yeah. Worms is a great way to do food scraps. But worms are picky. You can't put everything in the worms. You can't do a lot of. You can't do meat. You can't do a lot of citrus. There's a lot of things you can't put in. So yeah, that would be an example of. You might just have to throw that stuff away. But like I said, you you, you know you need to focus on the stuff that you are doing. You know, it's not I'm throwing this away. It's that I'm you know I'm diverting this stuff. Um, so worms are a good one. Um, Island View has a really nice, they sell the full worm kit, everything, the worms, the bin, if you want to just go buy it, cut and dried. Um, the county has these compost bins that you can buy from them or you can do home composting. Um, if you have a little space, you have a yard, um, you don't need a bin, you can do an outdoor compost pile. Um, you can just look up how to do it and the county actually has a lot of uh, information about so composting. it's not illegal to do it no. your own <laughs> Compost. No. The only thing is, and like I said, the county, because they don't have this program, they have a very robust home composting page on their website. Okay. And they have a lot of information about exactly how much, you know, um, like apparently you should go get some mulch because like it gets too wet with all the food and then you just throw some mulch in and it gets all dried right. out. And there's all sorts of little tricks, but it's pretty easy. And they, those things eat a lot. So no, there's no rule saying you can't compost. Okay. And we would encourage it. Um, all right, so I'll, okay. So the food scraps, I'm not gonna go too much again because you guys don't have this program, but the one thing about the food scraps, if and when you do it, is that you wanna keep, again, the contamination down. This goes, again, with the sorting, 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 sorting. Make sure everything gets in the right containers. Um, the problem with contamination is that the food scraps gets ground up, and oops, I had a picture of kids playing. Um, and we, they get, it gets applied on parks and things, and so we don't really want any glass or plastic in there. Um, 